following the golden rule with Andrew Foss is proudly supported by Remax St. Andrews. Live in vacation by the sea, choose wisely, choose Remax. Hello, my name is Andrew Foss and welcome to Following the Golden Rule. And I'm Jay Reamer and for 26 weeks Andy and I will be discussing the ABCs of leadership. Last week we discussed Unifier and this week we're discussing Vigilant. And um, we certainly do have a lot of things to be vigilant for. I was thinking about this, um, uh, this recording today uh, lying in bed this morning and the, what came to mind was a line from Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and uh, Spencer Tracy came home from work one day and Tilly the the maid said he said how is everything Tilly and she said everything all has all done broke loose and uh, so I think that that's what's uh, going on here is uh, things have just uh, gotten into quite a turmoil on many different fronts and uh, so how would you, um, how would you like to start to unravel this? Is it unravelable? And I'm not so sure at this point. And uh, as you know, this is something that I've predicted with some degree of accuracy um, over seven years ago uh, when I uh, first published uh, from bully to bullseye, move your organization out of the line of fire, and predicted cultural um, time bombs uh, from going off, and they've been exploding all over the place, um, both as it relates to um, the political situation and what's going on in, quite frankly, most organizations, and it could in it could have been avoided and uh, and we're dealing as I indicated in my introduction uh, we're dealing with a failed and broken system and pretty much every institution and organization is broken and um, it's interesting that uh, the World Economic Forum is this week uh, 51st anniversary mm -hmm. And uh, its theme is to do a, a reset. Yes. And uh, to do a reset, they have to look at, um, uh, and these are key government and business leaders from around the world, uh, coming together really to make a commitment on the, the framework for that reset. And I've written uh, fairly extensively about uh, doing those kind of restructurings or resets. And, um, and to do the reset uh, is not that difficult or not that complicated. It's just a matter of following uh, first, uh, what do you stand for? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and why uh, are you doing the reset? Why is it necessary? Mm -hmm. And it's pretty obvious uh, it's necessary today to bring more equality and inclusiveness and diversity mm -hmm. into the equation mm -hmm. so that whatever system is put in place or systems that are put in place benefits all. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, that's the easy part because it, it's a matter of strategizing it and looking at it on an all fronts basis and factoring everything you need to factor in. Mm -hmm. And then putting it, uh, and then articulating it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, governments in corporate America have been pretty good relative to articulating it. And uh, what they're gonna come up with isn't so different than what they've pontificated on before. But they haven't put their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. And the time has come for them 
to put their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. And the most difficult part is their ability to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, uh, so what does being vigilant mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just quote uh, from uh, someone who wrote about uh, the vigilant mindset. And just bear with me. Uh, it was Paul Gustavuson, and he wrote, In the Eyes of a Hurricane, The Seven Steps of a Vigilant Mindset. And it identifies what we need to do to, uh, uh, to uh, preserve through hurricanes of life. And we're going through a mother of a hurricane here. Mm -hmm. So the seven steps are, number one, prepare early for the unknown by developing yourself. Two, don't stand alone, but stand together with supporting forces. Mm -hmm. Three, after, after a retreat to safety, look to re-engage exit back into your breakout zone at your earliest opportunity. Assess the, for number four, is assess the deficiencies in your plan and be ready to pivot and stay off on course. Five, reactivate and restore to get your footing again. Six, keep the destination in focus no matter the competing environmental factors. And number seven is to stay optimistic. When anxiety and fear look to paralyze you, remember the skies above, the clouds are blue. It's a pretty wise advice, which we may get into next week when we talk about W is for wise, but that's the hard stuff. Putting it into action. Putting it into action, but but making sure that it's continually monitored mm -hmm. and not micromanaged, but making sure that, uh, that uh, uh, what you commit to uh, is delivered on. Yeah, that action has to be part of the system is, yeah, consistently. Yes, yeah. And uh, let, me, let me give you, a, let me tell you a story about um, my not being vigilant. Um, and it was relatively early in my career, and it was actually the first operating job uh, that I had. Um, um, and it was uh, running uh, logistics and physical distribution and supply chain for Loblaws, which is Canada's uh, largest company uh, and food retailer. And um, uh, from the get-go, uh, we established um, a value exchange model um, where uh, we had covenants or accords uh, with all of our stakeholders. And employees are obviously a stakeholder. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, uh, and the value exchange proposition is uh, setting very clear expectations that the organization has of, of its stakeholders, in this case employees. And um, uh, with the distribution, and then in turn, um, getting from them what they expect from the organization to deliver on those expectations. Mm -hmm. So when I introduced that uh, very early in my tenure there, um, uh, coupled with the expectations were um, uh, communicate um, and uh, this was with warehouse uh, employees um, communicate um, um, to us what and tell us what we need to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, taking a, a approach of, if you see a problem, you own it. 
mm -hmm. to bring it <laughs> forward. Um, what they expected from us was some of the very basics. And one of the one of the basics were clean cafeteria, clean washrooms, mm -hmm. and facilities. So that was the, you know that's easy. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to. <coughs> um, I was in one of our communities, and we had uh, distribution centers all over the country. But I happened to be in uh, in in a uh, city where we had uh, a distribution facility, so I thought, well, I'll just pop in. Uh, and this was outside of regularly uh, scheduled quarterly meetings we had with each uh, location mm -hmm. uh, that were pre pre planned and pre prepared. And um, um, some year and a half into my tenure, I paid to pay a visit that was off the schedule because mm -hmm. I was there on another matter. So before I went to go see the, uh, the general manager, who I'll call uh, Fred, I went to the bathroom. It was appalling mm. how filthy it was. Mm. So I make my way to uh, Fred's office, and he's kind of shocked to see me. And I said, Fred, what I'd like you to do is call somebody, and I want a pail of hot water, Lysol, Windex, paper towels, scrub brushes, etc. And he said, well, why do you want that? And I said, Fred, just humor me. <laughs> So in comes a guy with a pail and the mops and the whole gamut. I take off my uh, Brioni suit jacket. I said, okay guys, let's go. And they didn't know whether I should or go blind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <coughs> We went to uh, the first washroom, and I said, Fred, okay, you do the urinals, I'll do the toilets. And to the poor guy that brought in all the stuff, I said, you supervise. <laughs> <laughs> and we cleaned the, the washroom. Walking out, I said, do you think it's necessary to do the others? Oh, no, no, we, we, you know, we got the message. Uh -huh. I said, good. So what I'd like to do is come back in two weeks, not to go inspect and do a white glove treatment on your bathrooms, but I need to talk to your people, mm -hmm. which I did. And the message was, first, apologize, because we did not deliver on our expectation to you. Mm -hmm. Then I said, I got to call you out as well. You did not deliver on my expectation or our expectations of you, of us. Or you didn't call us out. Mm -hmm. and that's the deal. So it. <laughs> Uh, needless to say, um, uh, the uh, cafeterias and bathrooms stayed forever clean, <laughs> <laughs> but the message came out in terms of, for me, uh, uh, my lesson was, I just can't talk about this stuff. I've got to make sure, with a, again, without micromanaging it, mm -hmm. that we deliver on our promises, mm -hmm. and whether uh, and and that's uh, that's the vigilance that is required in any relationship, and particularly now with what's at stake, mm -hmm. uh, and governments and organizations and the leaders have been making promises and. Um, and they get a lot of media attention and in organizations there's 
There's reams and reams of paper and reports and inquiries and posters and whatnot that talk about values and and beliefs and um, and and it's basically rhetoric. Yes. And what is not in place is a system where uh, where there's that two-way uh, agreement uh, mm -hmm. to uh, both communicate and call one another out on mm -hmm. where uh, the relationship is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting if we look at the COVID situation right now, um, you know, we have, as a, as a body of people, been very vigilant uh, about wearing masks, washing hands, social distancing, and all of that kind of thing. What I notice, too, is that people are <clears throat> losing patience. And they're tired of this because they don't understand the exchange. And I think part of the responsibility to keep people vigilant is to explain to them why they're doing it. And if they have questions, well, why is it this way and not that way? They are entitled to an explanation. Because if people don't understand why they're doing something, they're not going to do it. And in a life and death situation, it's kind of important. So um, I think keeping vigilant is the, is the trick, is, is not dropping the ball. Absolutely, and um, you know, I, I think we need to cut um, uh, government a, a, a bit of slack here. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're dealing with is highly complex, and it requires uh, a, a number of of various groups and and organizations and people to work in a cohesive manner. Um, as I indicated, uh, in my responsibility at LABA was running their distribution and supply chain. Mm -hmm. and, and organizations uh, and, and retailers and uh, uh, other organizations and the military, um, uh, they sometimes don't survive because of the, uh, the uh, failure in in supply chain and distribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular case with COVID, uh, that's, that is the, the, the biggest uh, issue in terms of starting with the organizations and people that produce the ingredients for the pharmaceutical companies to produce the vaccine and then to get it out and distribute it in uh, in a in a uh, with protocol in terms of who's first, second, third, and uh, and how much uh, highly complex. Yes. And <coughs> to expect um, um, uh, a, a government leader to um, say, okay, bang, 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 bang. Here's what it's going to be, and here's what you can look forward to by X. Um, they're cautious. And they should be, mm -hmm. because the worst thing you can do on this kind of thing is overpromise and underdeliver. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and I know, you know, because of my background in the dr drug industry, I know that the best of minds, uh, both in terms of uh, people, the scientists and the, and the researchers and the people who uh, are logistics and supply chain experts. They, there is a mammoth, mammoth effort uh, that is being put together so that, uh, so that they are able to, as Joe Biden did uh, just yesterday, mm -hmm. um, uh, double the, uh, the number of dosages and gave some pretty optimistic uh, uh, projections and being able, by the summer, uh, end of the summer, to have uh, every American uh, vaccinated, mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't do that as a wish. He did that because he was able to get the kind of information from uh, that collaborative group. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, uh, in Canada, uh, the same, uh, I know the same kind of effort is, uh, is in there, mm -hmm. but talk about having to be vigilant mm -hmm. 
and this is one that you know you just don't um, pontificate on. You make sure that the, having the right people do the right thing the right way at the right time for mm -hmm. the right reason. And if ever, if there was ever um, uh, um, a vigilance required, mm -hmm. it's making sure you have those R's mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, in place. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's really uh, interesting because I think, it, if memory serves me, this is the first time in my life, anyway, that everyone has had to come on board and follow the rules. Now, you're always going to have a few outliers, but <clears throat> by and large, uh, especially here, we've been lucky, um, we have been incredibly vigilant and ev to a man. We have, um, in, in, we have invested um, emotionally into this whole thing to make sure that we do the right thing. Even, even in isolated little St. Andrews where knock on wood we've been very lucky so far, we are more vigilant, I mean we're as vigilant as, as any other community that I know of. And it's a really interesting practice. I mean it, 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 you, you form different relationships when you're all on the same team. And I, and, I, and I think, you know, talking of, on relationships, you know, getting uh, relationships are very fragile also and require a certain amount of vigilance. Absolutely. And, uh, and, 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 and yes, relationships, whether it's uh, with your employer or family or um, um, organizations where you work, work for, um, if you don't have that, right value exchange proposition mm -hmm. in place, uh, uh, it becomes very fragile. And, um, and uh, you use the word lucky. Luck has not, nothing to do with it. Mm. Uh, vigilance. People were vigilant mm -hmm. relative to uh, knowing what they had to do to protect themselves and others. Mm -hmm. And um, in the U.S., uh, um, they've overlay, overlapped uh, their, blind, their, their blindness uh, to, uh, to um, a, a ideology, and, and it has affected how people view themselves and others. Mm -hmm. And, and unfortunately, it's to the point where many just don't care about the other. Mm. And, and uh, as a result of that, uh, democracy is at risk. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's not because of COVID. It's because they were living in that very fragile thread of democracy. Mm -hmm. I'll, give, I'll, I'll read you another quote, and um, it, it's so relevant today, and it talks about democracy, and when we talk about democracy, we should look at it as freedom. And the quote's by Alec, Alex Klotzewicz, and I quote, freedom is like a small bird. If you squeeze it too hard, you will kill it. But if you don't hold it firmly enough, it will fly away. Indeed, freedom can be both elusive and, so as the McCormick Tribute Museum so powerfully reminds it, it requires our e eternal vigilance, our willingness, our ability, and our conviction to stand up for that which is right. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we've talked about it throughout the series, and now we're kind of winding the series down, uh, that one quote kind of uh, talks about mm -hmm. uh, what we should be expecting of ourselves and what we should do for others. Mm -hmm. And it's following the golden rule. Yeah. Well, it, it, it also, it ties really nicely into the whole um, exercise of self-reflection because as we become more um, reflective on how we feel and how we engage with these different characteristics, um, it, um, 
we become more able to be vigilant because we are more interested. We're not, we're not, we're no longer sidelined. We are in the game. And I think that that's important and it's a great quote. Yes. Yeah. So Andy, um, thank you very much for your thoughts on being vigilant uh, today. It's critically important. And thank you for joining us once again in this series. We will look forward to seeing you next week when we will be discussing W is for wise. Following the Golden Rule with Andrew Foss is proudly supported by Remax St. Andrews. Live in vacation by the sea, choose wisely, choose Remax.